All right. So let's see. Um, our next team, let me just grab the spreadsheet and see who is the second one. Um, our traffic data tool for business, utilizing traffic data to support local businesses. So I know that many of you want to join the presentation. So if you want to all, I don't know who's taking the lead on that and running it. Patrick, you had reached out to me. Yes, Alex will share a screen. Okay. And we'll get started. I'll start and then everybody make sure you unmute before we start. Okay. And you want to do full screen, please? Or is there a presentation mode? Yeah, it's a presentation mode. On the right, if you go to present or there, either one. It's next nice to share. Pop Upper right. right. Oh, got it. There sorry. you go. Got it. Thank you. Super. We good? Okay, our presentation was a traffic data tool to help businesses. And we wanted to use traffic data to help businesses typically at the local level. The, we all, all our roles are listed here. I'm not gonna go through them, but if we go to the next slide. So we, we asked ourselves, how can we help local businesses to thrive? Especially in our current economy where we have COVID going on and things are getting potentially back to normal, but things are also changing. So we're gonna to cover today our personas, who the business owners are that we're addressing, the use of the various tools and data, and then we'll go into some calculations and displays and then get into future applications. So who are the people in our neighborhood? <laughs> well, the first one is Gonger, and he's a local restaurant owner, and he is interested in trying to help his business, and he's wondering about how to attract new people into his restaurant and he's particularly looking at car traffic because if you look at large trucks he doesn't have really good parking in the middle of the city so he's really trying to address how many cars go through and how can the cars help his business and how can he bring people in through advertising and then rosita she's a person who really wants to open a, a local gas station she worked at one as a kid and she wants to start one but she's not really sure where to locate that. And so she also was thinking, maybe I can use some data, uh, GIS local data somehow to help her business. So what exactly is the traffic data tool for businesses? The traffic data, data tool for businesses is a tool that makes use of traffic data and sorts traffic data into a form that is more useful for businesses. It'll give information to businesses, based on traffic data that can help them think about uh, profits based on the types of vehicles that uh, travel near their business and give them ideas on how to supply their businesses and the times of the day that will be busiest. Thank you. Um, our data source was the New York State GIS website and we're able to narrow our search down by county and by transportation theme. Uh, and we used two files, the New York State Average Annualized Daily Traffic and the New York State Tax Parcels, which we used for the businesses and the business types. Um, next slide, please. And one of the challenges we faced was uh, opening those files, which were in GDB format and converting them to a usable format. Um, so we eventually found this open source program called QGIS, and we were able to view the files, as you can see there, that's what they look like, and export them in CSV format. Um, next slide, please. And we filtered the traffic data down to uh, only Main Street in Poughkeepsie. Um, and the uh, data that we used was the road name, the beginning and ending points of where the traffic was measured along that road, average truck and car percentages, and morning, afternoon, and evening traffic. Thanks. So um, we were able to use this data to leverage um, multiple coordinate points on a road to determine the average number of trucks um, versus cars versus um, motorcycles and leverage that data to create um, 
sort of a depiction of coordinates of high traffic areas. And we can use this information to leverage um, to leverage this information for businesses to kind of determine um, how they can advertise uh, and also where to where to locate. So like one example is that a fast food restaurant, which are indicated by these um, like thumb, thumbnails, they might want to advertise lower price items that are faster to make during rush hours and items that cost more during slower traffic periods. So this part of code is very critical for the real value of each target market. So what we wanted was that most uh, for restaurants, we would want more cars because usually in cars, you would have more people rather than a truck or a motorcycle and motorcycles. We kept them out of question because they were, there wasn't a really high capacity of them, a high amount of them for each like road. So we took them out of the equation and for gas stations, you would want more trucks because trucks usually eat a lot of fuel. So this, uh, for, um, so our, equation that we used was um, for gas stations was to multiply the amount of gallons times the number of vehicles and then uh, multiply that by the price per gallon and then uh, multiply that by the markup. And for restaurants was just um, a basic uh, estimated value that we created for how much money that a certain individual would spend depending on their vehicle type. So for cars, we had 20, for trucks, we had 15 and for buses, we had 150. And a business owner would receive approximately $1,435.20 in a week uh, based on the parameters business equals service station or a gas station. The total vehicles would be 100, the car percent would be 50, truck percent would be 25, and bus percent would be 25. And the approximate total cost, I mean, total amount received is based, uh, is the car cost, AKA the total uh, amount of money that you would receive from all the cars that pass by. In terms of future improvements and uh, applications, uh, the improvements that we could do is integrating more data, such as you saw before that in the CSV files, there were um, a lot more fields that we didn't use that we could definitely integrate um, inside uh, our structure to show all of that data as well and how that data could help businesses. Also integrate it from more sources. So things such as uh, cameras or um, other sort of um, recording um, tools we would also streamline the code to use JSON directly instead of CSV uh, because uh, that would one, make it uh, simpler instead of having to convert the JSON to CSV and allow us to get live updating of the data using uh, JSON from servers and devices. Uh, and after all that, we would uh, utilize machine learning to refine and clean the data automatically uh, thus, um, uh, lowering the uh, amount of errors, the uh, margin of error, the uh, sort of things that would um, change the data that will be inputted um, into the Python to then create the, um, um, the monetary data. Um, in terms of applications, uh, there, there's business location planning infrastructure planning, delivery route planning, uh, customer identification, and zoning and city planning. Uh, conclusion, the traffic data tool for businesses will help business owners learn and understand traffic data and how it can impact their profits and their business decisions. It is something that would uh, grow over time and be able to supply large amounts of data through maps and uh, databases to help businesses grow more and more and make smarter decisions. All right, awesome traffic project presentation. Excellent, excellent. And so I am going to now turn it over to our judges once again so that they can ask you any questions. 
Congratulations on tackling a tough subject and problem and uh, folding multiple team members in because every person you add to the team adds complexity to a project. So I got to congratulate you guys on having a large team working on a hackathon as if it was a real business. Congratulations. So my question, if you're about revenue improvement for businesses, you can give them a fee and a success fee based on your products, kind of like a Google approach for advertising. But you also have the opportunity for which signs in town, billboards or whatever, would be the most impactful. So I like where you're heading and I think you've got the foundation for it, but you need to look at the economic standpoint for this one. So the question that I have for you is, what was the original trigger for your project? Um, I can answer that. <laughs> um, <laughs> the original trigger for the project was, I know there's Poughkeepsie Roadway rework they're talking about, especially near the Mid-Hudson Bridge and congestion. So the original uh, topic was really, uh, can we use traffic data to of, to monitor congestion and design like uh, roundabouts or whatever? And since then, somebody's mentioned businesses, and so our persona changed from a driver going through using traffic data to owners. Um, so it did change quite a bit based on the team and our passions. So <laughs> it was, you know, it's traffic, but. Sometimes it's useful, especially in hackathons, to frame where you started and where you finished, even if it's an afterthought, to show the evolution of your thinking versus we started with this problem, we ended up solving a different problem, which is fantastic. Because if you're dealing with safety and security, it would be a different problem and solution, but potentially the same project you have. So congratulations. Absolutely. And I see Scott is using this time to not only understand better, but also to provide the mentorship right here. And he is tremendous asset for that. I would ask only one question because it's kind of, I shall ask the first team as well. But the question is about if you would be given one phrase for your value proposition, really quick, elevator pitch, one phrase. What do you do? Anyone? I'll let someone else speak on that one. Team members, what do you do here? I think it's leverage data to improve community outcomes. Leverage traffic data, data to improve community outcomes. Whether it's roots or economics. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Answer it. <laughs> I, uh, one thing I do want to point out, the, the fact that we, that we did multiple pieces, um, there's a lot of innovation that happens when you pivot more than one thing. If you just take traffic, you come up with one thing. If you just take business and zoning, you come up with something. When you have to say, I have to combine them, all of a sudden you have a focal area of just innovation around you know, that. You take another piece of data and you come up with a totally different idea. Yeah. I got right, awesome. uh, another idea for a... Uh, like the, the motto thing that Yulia said, um, le leveraging traffic data for economic and community solutions. Write all your answers down. They might I, be all valuable. I like the logic that you're using. Just put a multiplier in there about who has the most pain or who has the most gain. Mm. Right. Awesome. Is assigned after that. So the question I had was um, pretty much for the pitch. Who's the persona for this pitch? The reason I'm asking that is, are you pitching this to someone to take the idea for like, okay, great, you actually have all the technology to go ahead and chunk the data into something. But what's actually the end product of this, especially since it's targeted for local businesses? 
I'm a local business. This is great. You have all this data, but how do I maximize it as local business? What's, what's the minimum viable product you, you're trying to come up with? Is this something I have to build and, 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 and invest in this as the data source or? No, I, I think like we would, you know, given the time frame, we had a lot of constraints. So I think like we started looking into how we can integrate this into applications and how to integrate different elements into the same source. So we started looking into how we can integrate Python into R and then also how we can create this and put it into some sort of application. And it's just with the time constraints and 20 hours is just pretty difficult. No, I understood. Sometimes when, you, when you're pitching, like if this was pitching for, um, for capital to go ahead and take the business even further, you always have to have some element of a prototype, a minimum viable product, even if it's just a mock-up. Even if you just show me slideware, what the, what the application would look like, that's fine. I mean, I've known many of startups that they had initial seed money just to produce the prototype. They didn't even get to the code level yet. So this is excellent work where you got it to. It's just the, the destination is you always want to get to an, um, an MVP, a minimum prototype. So you get actually giving the big picture how they consumed and then you can let the investors think, oh, I can take it to go ahead and do these things or add machine learning or anything else. So excellent work. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Thank you, judges. Thank you for your presentation, hackers. Alex, could you please stop sharing your screen?